when I'm fishing for hogfish in the Gulf, there's really four types of bottom that I focus my effort on uh, when I'm targeting them on a on a trip. Um, run through those four real quick. The first is basically just hard bottom. You'll see these rocks kind of clipping some, a lot of spaces with sand in between tend to hold a lot of hogfish. Uh, another type is areas roll off, um, with vegetation all around it. A, a roll off is just basically a, a ledge that's kind of flat and doesn't have an undercut to it. Um, and on top of those, a lot of times you'll see this vegetation, a lot of, uh, grasses, sea fans, that type of stuff. There are combos of the two with when you get vegetation and rocks, and a lot of times those are good for hogfish as well. Uh, here's basically what a roll-off would look like. Water was a little dirty this day, but you can see the bottom is just kind of sand, and then the top is real rocky. So instead of a ledge, which would look like this, where you get kind of an undercut, uh, so you get the ledge with an undercut right here. A roll off is just basically a, you know, over a period of 20 feet, it's going to drop four or five feet. And usually the top part of the um, will have the structure of the rocks and all that. Um, so these ledges, you'll see a lot of times top limestone rock, you know, hogfish might be on top one day, bottom the next day, they kind of move around all over it. Sometimes they're up in it. Um, you also get some boulder looking bottom. You'll see some big rock on top. And then another another look at a smaller ledge. So really I focus my efforts when I'm hog fishing on, you know, hard bottom, crunchy bottom as some people call it. Um, ledges is the second type I'm really looking for. Roll offs with vegetation, um, just other little rocks. The third type. And the fourth type is is basically these, you know, bigger rock structures and a lot of times you'll get combinations of these where you'll have some ledges some you know small ledges surrounded by vegetation you'll have small ledges surrounded by hard bottom you'll have hard bottom with some you know big rocks mixed in um, but, so basically the, what you're looking for is, is hard hard bottom meaning rocky limestoney cracks ledges and and whatnot uh, the bottoms I don't typically try to fish on for hogfish are artificial reefs and wrecks um, just because they're so popular. I'm, I know a lot of divers that will spear hogfish off of wrecks and, and artificial reefs. So it does mean they're not there, but I typically avoid them just because I'm solely focused on hogfish and you're going to get more numbers off of the, the private stuff. Um, springs and sinkholes also tend to hold hogfish, but very popular as well. So I will avoid those. They might hold hogfish, but it's not necessarily one of fish. So let's uh, let's check some video. Fishing off the west coast of Florida, I focus mainly in, in depths between about 35 and 65, 70, 75 feet of water. Uh, the, the best depth in the winter months and the colder months when people are targeting them tends to be around the 45, 50 foot depth range. Um, that's where we'll get some, some bigger numbers. I record a lot of underwater footage and go back a lot of times, study it, kind of see how they act, you know, figure out what all my spots are. And so here's some of the, kind of some of that footage that I'm going to talk through to let people know, you know, what to look for when they're hog fishing. Um, this is uh, just a spot. It's just some broken hard bottom. Uh, you can tell hard bottom is, is just, you know, a lot of rocks, uh, scattered sand in between them. And this, I believe, is is probably the best hogfish type of, of bottom that you're going to find when you're wanting to catch them. So as GoPros, kind of down, you know, hogfish. Got hogfish here, hogfish here. There's a hogfish in the distance as well. The hogfish just kind of hang out and, and peruse all around this hard, crunchy bottom. Um, you got a little bit, some sea fans, a little vegetation, uh, just a variety of, of bottom. Now the the best thing about this type of bottom when you're hog fishing is there's not as many other species that are competing for your baits. Um, big male hogfish right there, and what that'll do is it'll limit your bycatch, and and you can kind of focus on you know the hogfish as opposed to you know dehooking all these other types of fish that you're catching. On a depth finder, this just looks like a thick red line or whatever, you know, color your, your bottom is set to. 
So the thicker the color, the harder the bottom. If you're on sandy bottom, it'll look thin um, on the bottom. And big male hogfish kind of coming in, cruising, saying, you know, what's going on over there? He'll show up. Uh, always usually loves to inspect the GoPro. If there's a bunch of other fish eating baits, you know, those, those big males will, will, will move around. So this is by far the best type of bottom you can, you can get when you're trying to catch hogfish. You can see there's, you know, a few grunts around, not a ton of other fish. Makes it much easier to, to focus on the hogfish. Same spot, different day. Uh, just kind of hard bottom. Hogfish coming in from a distance. Female, female. Another female. Um, just, you know, some, some rocks that tend to come up off the bottom a little bit. You know, little areas that they can cruise in. There's a big male. That's a, that's the, the main target right there. You want to get those big males. You can see, you know, there's some other fish around, but not a ton. So this is one of the, the better hogfish spots that, that we will, you know, target. Uh, here's another piece of uh, hard bottom. This is um, from uh, Rowdy Trouty. This is a spot in about 40 feet that he, uh, that Rowdy Trouty found. Um, same type of thing, just hard, crunchy bottom, hogfish, hogfish, you know, sheep's head, great sign if you're, if you're seeing sheep's head in your, your, your hogfish areas. Um, you know, big males, big males, just 40 feet of water, nothing too crazy. Lots of hogfish though. And let me go back to the beginning here so you can kind of see the, the overlay of the spot. So GoPro's going down. You know, nothing too crazy, just broad area of, of big hard bottom. You know, sheep's head hogfish. And another hogfish over there. You'll notice uh, as you start fishing some of these spots, the, 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 the hogfish will move around. You're not going to always get them in the same spot over and over when there's these big open hard bottom areas. It's just a matter of which one they want to stop at on that given day. But, you know, focusing, moving around, concentrating, you know, what wind did you find them on what was the water clarity on certain days um I, I believe calmer days tend to produce better on the the open areas of hard bottom whereas if it's been rough for a week you know bigger ledges tend to will will, will hold more fish that's uh, just kind of fishing in general and here is a ledge uh it's um, about 55 feet of water real good visibility this day um, typically ledges, I find the fishing's better on, on dirty water days. The fish will hold up tighter to the ledge. The snapper will bite a little better when the water's dirtier. The hogfish as well. But real clean water, real good visibility this day. So GoPro gets down. Sits right up under this ledge. So you can see kind of what a ledge is. It's, you know, these rocks and limestone edges with some undercut to it. And there's a hogfish kind of, you know, rooting, looking down on the edge of these rocks right here. Um, big male. Very cool color on it. Bunch of mangrove snapper up under. You know, they're told, and that's a, that's a, those are some big mangoes too. And another female hogfish, you know, coming to investigate the camera. Lots of grunts. Two female hogfish. Mangoes, some other little types of grouper and, and stuff up under there. So real cool bottom ledge right onto this day. The male hogfish holding real tight to the ledge. Something kind of spooked him there. So ledges will hold hogfish as well. Female hog. The problem with fishing ledges a lot of time is if you're not right on it, you might not be getting the hogfish if you're not... You know, in the sand, they, they move around a lot on the ledges. Um, I typically like to to fish just off of it if I'm, ho if I'm hog fishing. And if you're getting some bycatch like mangrove snapper, you know, nothing wrong with that. Uh, ledges hold lots of... Ledges hold lots of other species. Grouper, snapper, red grouper, gag grouper. That might, you know, take you up on a ledge, break you off. It happens, you know, especially if you're trying to get numbers of hogfish. You might be using some light leader, 20, 30 pound. And you just don't stand a chance if you get real big gags. It takes a lot of luck, a lot of finesse, you know, a lot of feel getting those bigger gags out. 
Um, so ledges can provide you know good numbers of hogs as well as other types of fish. Um, there's a female hog swimming up under. And so on this day, we knew there were hogs here, but we didn't get any. Um, no big ones, at least. Just, I think, with the clean water, real tough bite, even though we know they were down there. And the camera, we kind of backed it out away from the ledge a little bit. So you can see a real big undercut. You got some scamp grouper on top. You got the mango sitting way up under. Um, a day like this, if you're getting mangoes, you're using, you know, 15 pound liter, real light jig heads, no hardware, and you're dropping the bait straight into the ledge. Now, uh, this camera comes around, ledge runs a real long way. On the depth finder, you can see kind of the undercut when you get right on it. Um, this one runs north to south, so if you're going east west, you're getting, you know, a three or four foot jump depending on where you're hitting the ledge. And you can see a real defined on the depth finder, especially zoomed in four times. Always have your depth finder zoomed in four times. Um, so you get kind of a broad picture of it. Can't even really tell how far it runs. It goes for a long way. Another interesting thing about this spot is to the north, there's another ledge that we've never really fished. I've driven over it many times. It's one of these days I'm going to stop and concentrate my efforts more on that one. Um, probably sooner than later. So just real cool view, you know, it's cool looking reef fish. Um, GoPro bouncing off the rocks. But awesome, awesome shots when the water gets clear on a day like this. Bring it around. So this is when we were kind of bouncing around trying to get something going. Um, fish just weren't being very cooperative that day. It happens, uh, especially get out in some deeper water. You know, when the water's a lot cleaner, you might be getting some slow bites. So just kind of moved around. Hogfish. You can see. Love the camera. Following it. Very curious. Like what's this thing doing down here? Coming off the ledge a little bit. Another cool reef fish. So cool looking ledge. Not a whole lot happening though. Um, here's another ledge of mine. It's out in about 70 feet. Whoa. Um, this is a big ledge, and this was after you know quite a bit of of wind. Um, another place that holds hogfish, and I would fish something like this on you know after a a, a week of wind or. You know, it's a big ledge back there. Stingray, lots of other, you know, snapper and stuff tend to tend to be on this spot. Lots of mangoes, mangoes, mangoes. Um, but big ledges also hold lots of hogfish. If you're going to fish big ledges, I suggest you don't want to be right on the spot if you're fishing for hogfish. Um, you'll get more hogfish just off of it. Um, top or bottom, the fish move around. So big ledge, good for hogfish too. And then here's a ledge that's a little deeper. It's in about 90 feet of water. Haven't really done well on hogfish here just because there's so many other species. Snapper, yellowtails, um, grunts. But big male hogfish right there. I'm sure... Burn through enough shrimp. You can see what he's doing right there is rooting. That's when you know they're feeding. He's got his nose down in the sand, looking through, trying to find shrimp, crustaceans, other little things. Gag grouper. This is a smaller ledge, a little further offshore. But that's a that's a very large male hogfish. Would have loved to have caught that one that day. Didn't catch him. Ended up seeing them on here later. Going through some more spots. Um, this is some more broad areas of, of hard bottom. Um, you can see just big areas of, of open, you know, surrounded by rocks. This is different than the other spots. The spots earlier, very similar looking bottom. Um, and what do you see? What's curious when the camera hits the bottom? Hogfish. 
I love this just crunchy bottom. Another nice male there. And you can see just kind of the, the waves of, of open hard bottom and, and not a whole lot of other species in, in this type of bottom, which is good. If, if you're seeing a ton of fish on your depth finder, you might not necessarily want to be fishing there because you're going to be getting lots of bycatch. Uh, here's a spot in about 60 feet of water. This is a, a big roll off, meaning it goes from about 60 to 65. It's not a real sharp drop. Um, just real hard bottom, and it's got a lot of these sea fans and, and corals up on top. What do hogfish like? They also like, you know, this this vegetation that they can kind of get in and out of. There's a scamp grouper, some grunts. Um, that's a real colorful male. Very cool looking to see him underwater. Um, this spot we typically will move around a lot. Um, GPS troll motor. You know, move five feet, move ten feet, because you're getting a lot of other small snappers, grunts. The hogfish love to move around. Um, very broad, open area. There's no real crazy structure other than the roll-off itself. But same thing with fishing a big ledge. You want to be a little bit off of that. Um, so you can see here's the the roll-off. So up on top, it's about 60. Down on the bottom, it's about 65. And this is just going right along the edge. It's it's not a you know a, a steep ledge uh, like that other one I showed earlier. That's about a five foot ledge with a big undercut. This is just kind of a gradual drop off. Um, also a very good hogfish bottom. And what do you know? Big Mister Hogfish right there. He's chilling near these grunts snapper. He's kind of curious, see what's going on. Why is this camera, you know, in this vegetation, making all this noise? Being very curious, kind of trying to be the alpha dog, you know, get away from my bottom. I'm going to come see what you're doing. So very, very cool, very big hogfish there. Um, lots of grunts that we were probably picking through. Eventually you pick through enough of them, you get those hogfish biting. Get your bait right on the bottom. Give yourself the best shot. There's more of that hard, crunchy bottom. Uh, this is actually a series of small ledges that I have out in about 65 feet. You can see Mr. Nice Hogfish there, big male. Kind of saying, hey, well, you know, what's this camera doing? Drop it into my spot. And then uh, here's one of the problems you run into. Start getting on too good a bottom. Too much relief. Crazy amounts of mangrove snapper. So if you're seeing shows of fish, you know, up in the water column, it's not going to be hogfish. Hogfish, you'll see if they're showing it all right on the bottom. Um, this is kind of the problem you'll run into fishing bigger structure. You'll run into hogfish, but you've also got mangrove snapper, grunts, um, porgies, not necessarily bad things, but you're working a lot harder. So there's uh, hogfish, you know, porgy, grunt. You can see the hogfish very curious about what this camera is doing. Hey, you're filming me. I think they like to be movie stars. That structure just kind of back there. There's a hogfish right in the middle with all the all the mangoes. A couple lane snapper. There's uh, some grunts fighting over a bait on the bottom there. So this is why you get so much bycatch hog fishing. Amberjack swimming through 60 feet of water, crazy. Lane snapper dot on its tail. Another hogfish right there. Just good bottom. You know, rocks, roll off. And then here is, uh, this is about 45 feet. So GoPro's going down. Some bigger rocks in, in structure. Hogfish, lots of hogfish, hogfish. Lots of grouper, lots of snapper. Sheep's head. 
this is a spot that we love to fish just because usually your bycatch is, is high quality. Um, you know, you're getting some sheep's head, you're getting some snapper, you're getting some grouper. Lots of hogfish that you're kind of weeding through everything else to get to. Um, this is why you need so many shrimp. You're getting all these other fish. Another nice hog. Uh, I think that's a gag that's staring at the camera back there. And the common thing you'll see is you got your mangrove snapper up in the water column. You got your grunts kind of up in the water column. If you want those hogs, you got to get below it all. Um, pork fish rarely catch. Occasionally get one on the uh, on a shrimp. So just very good bottom here. Crunchy, rocky bottom. Lots of snapper. They do mingle with hogfish quite a bit. So another nice hogfish. Um, this is a series of ledges, I believe, in about 40 feet of water. Kind of right in between them. Sheep's head. You know, ledges you see on your depth finder, you'll see a jump from you know 40 to 42 feet of water, something like that. You know, bigger ledges, 40 to 45. And your your bottom parts. Uh, so fish, very curious about the camera. Triggerfish love pecking away at the camera so got some hogfish when it hits the bottom just kind of curious like hey what's this what's that so this is just some more of that you know bigger rock piles with the little caves going through them um i actually don't think there's any hogfish in this video but it's what you're looking for ideally you got your grouper you got your grunts this is great hogfish terrain. And then something I typically will do is, is try to match the color if I'm using a jig head of of what I think the bottom looks like. So in this, I'd use either you know a, a, a dark green or um, a, a coral light you know pink color if I'm think I'm fishing in the sand a little bit. Um, just because I know when those hogfish are rooting around. That's kind of what they're looking for. So you'll see these shells and stuff in between. That's what the hogfish are trying to uproot. Shells look for shrimp. So if my jig head is matching the color of the shells that they're uprooting, and then they find a shrimp underneath, oh, bam, they're going to eat it. Um, same with the sheep's head. So, you know, a dark green, you know, a green watermelon would be a good color. Um, just just stuff like that is, is something you should think about when you're, Hogfish, you know, what's down the bottom color-wise that they might be looking at. So you can see vegetation. There's a little ledge right there. This is kind of up on top. So camera has the bottom. Hogfish coming on this side. It's like, man, what, what's going on here? Oh, it's looking at me. So same thing. They love that noise. Whatever reason. 